Psalm 127. Psalm 127, and look at verse 1 and 2. Because how do we build this company? So we've got to see God is our friend, and we've got to be friends of God, but then we've got to learn how to be friends with each other. Mm. As much as depends on you, you need to learn how to be friends with others. It says here, unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor in vain. Unless it's the Lord who watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Go down to verse 3. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are the sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies at the city gates. Unless the Lord builds the house, the, its builders labor in vain. The Hebrew word for builders is the same as the Hebrew word for sons. Mm -hmm. There's a key in this. Because, you know, more than being just friends of Jesus and friends of God, is when we come into a revelation and we live in the reality we are the sons of God. Mm. Friends are great, but to be the sons of God, now there's inheritance mm. Mm. that comes from the Father. Gee. Now there is a, you know, and Jesus is saying, you guys are no longer servants. You've, you're now graduating from relating to God, servants to a master. Now you're getting into this friendship mode uh, with God and with one another. This is awesome, but there's a higher level. Understanding the fullness that God is your personal father and you are the sons of God. And, and by the way, this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Romans uh, chapter 8 and Galatians tells us this. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of sonship, the spirit of adoption comes so that he fills us with the revelation we are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that revelation, it's called the orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. It's the orphan spirit that causes people not to be able to walk in sonship. Sonship is the key to the inheritance. It's an attitude, but more than that, it's, it's, a, it's an attitude that's an agreement with a spiritual reality. Because you can be like the, the prodigal son, and he was a son, but he didn't enjoy the inheritance of being a son because he had a wrong attitude. Mm. And by the way, the prodigal son's elder brother had a wrong attitude too. And the father said to him, you know, why are you upset? Everything I've got belongs to you. You can, you can have a party whenever you want. The inheritance is yours. But he had a wrong attitude. Mm -hmm. See, they didn't have the attitude of sonship, understanding <coughs> God as our Father, and we as the family of God. This is the, the Davidic company, which is seen in its fullness in the company that Jesus raised up. That's why Jesus was always focusing on the Father and talking about the Father and revealing Himself as the Son of God. And by the way, you cannot become anyone's spiritual father or mother until you've learnt to submit and yield yourself under a spiritual father or mother. Mm. And this is one of my main points today because I want to challenge you. Are you a, are you a visitor to Lions Well, By the way, if you're just visiting, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but... Are you, are you just a servant in the house? The servants, they serve for what they can get. They're like the hireling. Jesus talked about the hireling. When the wolf comes, the hireling runs away. The hireling doesn't care about the sheep. There's no love for the sheep. It's a job. So I'm here. What can I get for this? What is my reward? What is my payment? What am I going to get out of coming to Lions Rock? What's in it for me? That's the thinking of a servant. That's the thinking of the hireling. So when the wolf comes amongst us, when spiritual warfare breaks out, they're the people that leave. Mm. But those that are the friends of Jesus, it's like, well, this is my friend's sheep, so I love my friend as a friend, so I better look after his sheep. At least they'll probably hang out a bit longer. 
But you know what? If they're your father's sheep, that's your inheritance. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, you need to protect it. Yeah. When you're a son of Lion's Royal House of Prayer, because, because God has placed you into this family. It says in Psalms, He puts the lonely ones in the families. So when, God, when He says, this is your family, this is your company, I don't want you to be a hireling, I don't want you to be just a, a servant that's in it for themselves, uh, and I want you to be more than just a friend of Lion's Roar, I want you to actually enter into covenant of sonship. Because it's the sons that build the house. What is going to really build Lion's Roar? What is going to make us a, a genuine apostolic company or a prophetic company or whatever word you want to put on it, God's company in the earth that's going to be effective to see the kingdom of heaven come is that we have sons in the house that say, this is my inheritance. Mm -hmm. You see, the servant is thinking about building his own house. Mm -hmm. How can I build my own ministry? Mm -hmm. How can I make my own name great? And, and, and the friends are like that sometimes too. They'll be, they'll be in there. But the thing is that I'm going to build my house. Thank you. But when you become a son of the house, it's like if Lion's Roar is successful, I'm successful because what's happening here is part of my inheritance. Mm. And, and that's what I want to encourage you here. It's like unless the Lord builds the house, the sons labor in vain. Mm. So we've got to come under the Father and build with the Father because this attitude of sonship is a key that releases the Father's inheritance and anointing. The reason that the, these people gather around David, the reason that they benefited so greatly is because they're in covenant. They bound themselves to David through thick or thin, through hard times, through good times. They, they were with David. And they didn't depart from him. They fought with him. They ate with him. They slept with him. They suffered with him. They rejoiced with him. There was a oneness. Mm -hmm. And that's why then they become the great and mighty men. And the, and the kingdom that God built through David, they, they got these powerful positions and they got this powerful name and, 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 and uh, rapport mm -hmm. that came because they built what God was building. Verse 3, sons are a heritage from the Lord. For lions are a house of prayer to have true sons. This is a heritage. Mm. This is a blessing. Mm. Um, and again, we welcome all the visitors. And, uh, you know, and we're happy that there's some, some people coming here to serve. And we thank you for serving. Uh, but we want more than servants. We want sons. Mm. I want to raise up spiritual sons and daughters. Mm. That's my heart passion. When I first got saved, one of the first things I did was try to find spiritual fathers to speak into my life. Because mm. I realized that I needed. Um, you see, the only way you can break the orphan spirit is by introducing the orphan to a spiritual father. Mm. And God will bring fathers and mothers into your life to break that curse. Because you know that thing about independence and stubbornness and self-will? That's all the attitudes of the orphan. That's it. The orphan is the one who is the servant in the master's house. But when you have the heart of sonship, you start to link into the spiritual inheritance that God has for you. It says here, true sons are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Mm -hmm. Sons are, born, are the sons are born in your youth. They're like the arrows in a quiver. And so, in regards to the spiritual warfare that God's called our company into, you know, David and his kingdom, he had these mighty men around about him, and they become these lion-like warriors, and they helped to build the kingdom. They pushed back the enemy because they were together as like this army, but they're, they're more than an army. We saw last week, David and Jonathan, they had this covenant of brotherhood. Mm. That when we, when we realize we are family, we are brothers, we are sisters, we are building the Father's house. More than This is not Glenn's house, this is the Father's house. Mm. And I'm just uh, one of those spiritual representatives of the Father's heart, I hope. But, but sons are like weapons. Because it says, when the battle comes to the city gates, those sons will stand around you to defend you against your enemy. And it's very interesting because the city gate was where they had the law courts in ancient times. So when someone would bring accusations against the father and they bring him to the judge at the city gates, 
All of the sons would come to defend him. You know, um, for Lion's Royal House of Prayer to really break through to the next level, for us to be really successful and to grow, Satan, he targets leaders. Jesus, he quoted a psalm. He said, you know, strike the shepherd, scatter the sheep. It's a spiritual principle. Satan knows if he can strike the shepherds, he'll scatter the sheep. I want you to be more than sheep. I want you to be sons and daughters. So when the shepherd gets struck, you gather around us to guard and protect us, to pray for us, to encourage us, to support us. If, we, if, if you, me and I are supported by you, and you pray for us, and you encourage us, and you stand with us. And when the spirit of accusation comes around the church, you know, all the... Because the, Satan's name is accuser. All the little demon gossiper things that come into meetings and, and come in, sit down and, you know, say things about Glenn and Hume. You know, if Glenn and Hume have done something wrong, come and talk to Glenn and Hume. <laughs> That's what it means to be friends. But what happens is you open the door and this spirit of accusation comes in and all these stories start to go around and everyone's talking. What you're doing is you're employing Satan. You're not just running away when the wolf comes. You're welcoming him into the flock. Uh, I'm just saying this. Whoever's in leadership, pray for them. Support them. Because that's the thing is when you're the sons and you see your father and mother being attacked, you gather around them. What can we do? Because this family is my inheritance. And I'm not saying that you can, you know, there's things that I make, make mistakes and Hume makes mistakes. Come and have a talk to us and, um, and, and, you know, we all do it in love. But the thing is, um, there is a spirit. We saw this last Thursday night that there's a spirit of accusations trying to get released into Lions Roar. And we actually saw it, uh, I saw it in the spirit walking around the church starting to talk to different ones with accusations against one another. But also accusations against Hume and myself. I'm just speaking it out. Don't listen to that voice. Because the sons will gather and defend their father at the city gates. So, understanding now, what does it mean to be sons? This commitment to build. A very interesting scripture in Hebrews chapter 3. <clears throat> I had to meditate on this a lot. Mm. Hebrews chapter 3, starting with verse 1. Therefore, my holy brothers, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, who is the apostle and the high priest, whom we confess. And ultimately, Jesus is the greatest David. He's, he's even greater than David. You know? He's the Messianic. And he says here, fix your thoughts, fix your focus on Jesus. He is our apostle. He's the leader of the apostolic company. And he is our great high priest. He goes on, Jesus was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. So here they're trying to build the house of God. And Jesus was faithful to the Father, just as Moses was faithful to all God asked him to do. Comparing now Moses and Jesus, it goes on. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses. Okay. Moses is a great man. Moses was incredibly faithful with all that God asked him to do. We need to respect uh, the testimony of Moses. But it says Jesus has been found that he was even more faithful than Moses. And he's even worthy of greater honor than Moses. Why is that? goes on. For every house is built by somebody. But God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house. He was testifying to what would be said in the future. <clears throat> but Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. 
And we are his house if we hold on to our courage and we hold on to the hope to which we boast. Moses was faithful, but he's faithful as a servant. Uh, he had the understanding that God was this, this master of the universe. God was the king of the universe. And all of that's true about God. And God was his boss. He needs to obey God. Moses brought the law. So we've got to obey the law. We've got to obey. The law is like this. There's a law. And it was written in stone, by the way. Moses brings the law in stone. Obey the law. And he establishes the, the covenant to build God's house. And it's, it's a law in stone. It says of Jesus Christ, he writes his laws in our hearts. It's got to do with the heart, not a heart of stone. Mm. It's not about obeying law. It's about obeying the voice of your father. Mm. That's why when you read scripture, you've got to listen to the voice of your father. Mm. When you know him as father and you trust him as father and you love him as father, then obedience to the commands of Christ isn't to a dead law written in a rock. But it's from the heart of the father and he loves me and he wants the best for me. So if I obey him, it's going to be really good for me. I will be blessed through obedience. So you, 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 you obey, but with the heart of a son. This is the difference. So Jesus, what Jesus is establishing is greater than what Moses established. Jesus is establishing this company. It's a family under God himself as father. And Jesus becomes like a father to us because he knows the father. And so if we want to be a people that would have this great honor, that we want to build the house that Jesus is building, then we need to learn how to relate to the Father and then one another as sons and daughters of the Father, our brothers, our sisters, that we need that commitment with one another as we encourage one another into it, not a dead law in a rock. That's why I want to emphasize Wait on the Lord and hear His voice. What is the Father saying? But again, what is God saying through others? Because God does delegate in the body of Christ leaders. And in regards to your life, God wants a personal, intimate relationship with you. Amen? Okay, so the Old Testament thing was, here is God, here is you, here is the priest, and you have to relate to God through the priests. Okay, and, and some of the like Anglicans and Lutherans and Catholic Church, they still have a system like this, and they call these guys fathers. That's why Jesus said, call no man father. Mm -hmm. What Jesus is dealing with is, when you are looking to a man as your primary father and not having direct personal relationship with God, that's not what I'm encouraging. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I want to encourage you to have direct personal relationship with God yourself. And then my job as a spiritual father would be to try to direct you into that. Mm. But also God, he, he, he makes those leaders. And God says, okay, I want, you've gone through the test, you've gone through the preparation. Now, Glenn, I want you to establish this house of prayer. And so then in, in that, then God is speaking to you sometimes through me as a leader. Maybe in regards to your personal life, we've got to get the Word of God. What is God saying through His Word? We bring the Word. This is important. It's still there. God speaks through the book. However, when it comes to Lions Royal House of Prayer, then God will speak to leaders, and then that's why we're directing with the vision that comes from the Father's heart, I would hope. Uh, by the way, myself as a leader, I'm listening to when people feel that God is speaking and they come to us and they give us a prophecy or something, we, we pray over it and I'm listening to what God is saying through you as a leader. I've learned to do that. I learned as a husband to listen to what God says through my wife. That's leadership. It's not that my wife is telling me what to do. I'm trying to listen. What is God saying through my wife? So when we're all listening, what is God saying? It's going to help us build what God is wanting to build together. And, uh, but what I want to invite you into is I, I want to invite you into becoming the sons of the house. Mm. That you would now covenant to build Lion's Royal House of Prayer. At least for as long as someone, some of you have to go back to Korea, you know. But the thing is, as long as you're here, you know, have that heart of sonship. And then when you move to the next place, have a heart of sonship where God leads you. 
But we don't want just servants that are just here for what they can get out of it. And yeah, they're going to be serving, but, but you know, they're really looking for self-promotion. Like the eldest son, he's always looking around for what he can get out of it. Mm. Father, I just ask that you give us some understanding. I'm only able to just touch the... I'm scratching the surface of a much deeper subject, Lord. And even with words, Lord, I'm finding it hard to go to the depths in the time that I have here. But I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come. You are the spirit of sonship and you reveal to us the heart of the Father. You reveal to us the, the words of Christ, the heart of Christ. Ultimately, if the Lord is not building this house, then I'm laboring in vain. Humi's laboring in vain. We all are. It's your house, Lord. We acknowledge this is the Father's house. We ask that you guide and lead all of us in leadership, guide and lead all of us in this company, but that you would unite us with the heart and mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. That, Lord, that we would become those arrows in your quiver, that we would become those swords in your hand. Mm -hmm. That you would raise us up as your mighty warriors, Lord, the, the mighty men of the Jesus company. We ask that you reveal to us more and more the keys of the kingdom. Lord, give deeper understanding to what is covenant. Give deeper understanding to the covenant of sonship. Give us deeper revelation of God as Father. Lord, help us be healed of and set free from the orphan spirit and from the, the stubbornness and the independence of the donkey orphan. Mm. But Lord, let us be those that have ears to hear what you are saying, even this morning. Give us personal revelation that we...